you are doing so much to care for yourself. And even doing all of the right things to care for yourself, to listen to yourself, all of these things, it's not going to make it feel okay. It's not going to make it not suck. And it's not going to give you um, <laughs> optimism or hope for a future. It's so tricky because if it's like, if taking good care of myself, isn't going to give me any of those things, why should I do it? Right. And it's like, we, we do these things to be in relationship with ourselves, to really listen to ourselves, to help ourselves survive. And honestly, we do this stuff so that you can ask the questions that you're asking of yourself right now. What am I doing every day? Is there a reason for this? Is there a point to this? Is there something off now about this world that I inhabit? For a lot of people, when they try to go back to the pre-death routines, you sort of see it in this different light or this stark reality of like, I don't care about this anymore. It is a really, really normal thing to feel this chasm between who you are and what you're living and the roles that you have to inhabit, the habits, the patterns, the life that you have to engage with. We don't always have the option to not do that, right? Like bills need to be paid, all of this stuff. But I think there's something really honest and valuable and valid about not seeing the point of any of it anymore. We cannot see the point of it anymore with a sort of like, fuck everything, or we can change the tone of that and be like, given that this is what I have to live, is there anything that feels meaningful or useful to me in this moment? Is there anything that I want to do with this time? Maybe there is a different career path or job that you want for yourself given everything you've been through and everything you know. Now, I don't know what the situation is if you're in a place where you can do career exploration, but this sounds like honestly a bigger than a career question. It's like, what, what am I doing here? And we can ask that question with like, Rrr! and we can ask that question with some genuine curiosity to ourselves. What am I doing here? With the power that I do have, what do I want for myself? This is different than how do you make meaning out of what happened to you? Because I hate that question. Sometimes there is no meaning. It's more about given what I've lived and how I'm feeling about the structures of my daily life right now. Is there anywhere or any place that I can change things so they feels more in alignment with what I need and who I am and who I understand myself to be as I live through this. So one super, super, super normal, even doing all the right things to feel like, what the fuck is this? Two, it's a really good question. And you can ask it in certain ways that give you information back about yourself, about who you are and what you need right now to feel like there is a point to this day, to this moment, to this life. That might result in a career change. That might result in, you know, outside of the things that I have to do to pay the bills. I want more of this. I want to cultivate more of this in my life right now. I think one of the things that we do to ourselves, especially after a big loss is like, okay, I have to do this. So the next thing that I choose has to be really meaningful. It has to like light me up. It has to make life living here be worth it. All of this stuff. And that is a a ton of pressure to put on yourself, right? You don't need to know what's going to make life meaningful from here on out. Is there something that feels meaningful or useful or interesting to me right now today? It doesn't have to be something that feels interesting or meaningful or useful for the rest of this life. You have to fucking fight for this shit. Given everything that you've lived through, you have every reason to be disenchanted and pissed off at the world. You do. And I don't want that for you because you are still here. So getting fierce and ferocious for any even small corner of interest or curiosity in the world for yourself. Is there a point today? Is there something that I can hold on to today?
right? We're not talking about finding your inner strength or your inner resilience. No, because it's, that's not relevant. You have it. Yes. But that's not relevant to the issue that you're wrestling with. You can be resilient as all get out, but it doesn't matter. I, I think what you just said about like trying to reach for feeling inspired about something, like the reason that I say like that gap is too big and you, you got to get smaller. Sometimes it's what doesn't suck today. What's one thing that I can hold on today that doesn't suck? It's not going to feel good. It's probably not going to feel like this is my thing. This is what I can rally my life around for my life force around and get to today. Like that might be asking too much. I have been talking a lot about cognitive behavioral stuff and motivational interviewing lately in another context. And one of the things that I really like about both of those things is like when you want something, when you're doing some goal setting. You want to set your goals almost too easy so that you get the feeling of reaching that goal. If you, one of the things that we tend to do as humans is like set these really big lofty goals. And then every day that we don't hit that goal, we're like, right. We sort of dig ourselves deeper and deeper and start telling ourselves stories about how we can't do it. And clearly this is not going to work and all of this stuff. So when I say don't reach for inspiration. It's like, that is 19 miles ahead of you. What's an almost too easy goal for what doesn't suck today? Can I um, do something kind for myself today, knowing that life feels pretty empty and meaningless right now? What's one thing I could do to give myself some comfort or care for myself today, knowing what I know and feeling how I feel? You can't inspire yourself out of where you are. You can care for yourself inside where you are and want something more. It's that wanting something more, like that is your North Star. You're not going to reach that right now. You're going to exhaust yourself trying. That longing is what lets you know there's still something here, even if it's deeply uncomfortable and like the void in a lot of, uh, spiritual traditions, they talk about like that long, dark night of the soul or wandering in the desert or whatever they are. Like, this is that numb spot where it's like, this all you got, right? How you care for yourself inside those blank spots before the world starts to feel interesting again, like Honestly, that's one of the hardest parts of grief to me. It's that in between. It's a vastness of blankness that's really hard to navigate. And I think um, the thing to hold on to here is that that is a normal part of this, unfortunately. And every day coming back to given that this is what this is right now, how do I care for myself? I think I mentioned this last time. There's a, an old student of mine who um, their thing that they say to themselves is, is right now it is like this. They have it tattooed on them, which I just love right now. It is like this because it doesn't take away from the moment. And it's also like, how am I going to care for myself in this moment, given what this is?